This is your brain. And this is your brain on neuroinflammation. Of course, brains rarely literally catch fire, but inflammation in the brain is more common than you may think, and it may even contribute to mental health problems. Today on the Elements of Science, I'll show you why. When we say the brain is inflamed, we mean that its immune system is overactive. In a healthy brain, specialized immune cells respond to infection or injury. If you're on the wrong PowerPoint slide at the wrong time and sustain a head injury or get an infection in the nervous system, a rallying call goes out to recruit immune cells to clear out pathogens and any damaged tissue. And this is a good thing. But sometimes the immune cells don't get the message to stop and they damage brain tissue. When this goes on and on, it can become chronic neuroinflammation. You can't directly see or feel it, but it interferes with the way the brain functions. Chronic inflammation can happen after an injury or illness, but other things too, like chronic stress or even just getting old, can trigger out-of-control inflammation, and it does a lot of damage. Inflammation contributes to many neurodegenerative disorders, for example, multiple sclerosis. Normally, the brain's immune system is actually separate from the rest of the body's immune system, but in MS, immune cells from outside the brain break in and attack white matter. Neuroinflammation may also contribute to Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And although the processes are different, leading theories about these diseases suggest that abnormal protein deposits trigger inflammation in the brain, leading to a vicious cycle that ultimately kills neurons. Chronic inflammation is also present in some mental health conditions, especially depression. Many patients with depression show increased inflammation in both the brain and the rest of the body. And depression, of course, has many different causes, but this inflammation may be a factor. Levels of inflammation may even predict which treatments will be effective for different patients. All right, so sometimes the brain is inflamed, and that may contribute to disease, but what can we do about it? Well, some drugs can reduce neuroinflammation, and one surprising newcomer to this group is psychedelics, like psilocybin and LSD. Although it's certainly not what they're known for, psychedelics have rapid anti-inflammatory properties in the brain, and especially when combined with their potential ability to enhance neuroplasticity in certain brain regions, this makes them a potentially unique therapy for diseases that involve both inflammation and reduced neuroplasticity, like depression. But that track of research is just beginning, and drugs are not the only thing that can combat neuroinflammation. Lifestyle factors influence it too, especially good old diet and exercise. Getting enough exercise can help balance immune activity in the nervous system, as can certain diets that are low in sugar and unhealthy fats. Diet and exercise may even impact the likelihood and severity of diseases like Alzheimer's and depression. So, inflammation is often your friend, but sometimes your foe. Science is working toward figuring out how to support inflammatory cells while they do their jobs, without causing collateral damage. After all, fire is good, as long as it's under control. To learn more about the nervous system and how drugs can affect it, you can check out our drug science program, or this article on cutting-edge psychedelic research at the MIND blog. And speaking of psychedelic therapies for depression, the Mind Foundation is involved in a large study on psilocybin for treatment-resistant depression. Click the link in the video description if you want to find out more. So this has been the Elements of Science. I'm your host, Abigail Calder from the Mind Academy, and if you're interested in neuroscience and psychedelic research, we have many more videos for you to explore. So see you next time on the Elements of Science. Mm -hmm.